Will using the Memory Palace technique improve your brain? The answer is absolutely yes. I'm gonna give you three, four reasons why. I better come up with the fourth one. That's coming right up. Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where we help mature learners of any age use the Memory Palace technique to focus on the information that will improve your life so that your learning journey is fun, effective, easy, elegant, and an unending mental adventure that unlocks the full powers of your brain. So if you're new here, get started now so you don't miss anything by clicking the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're notified when we do our live streams and these are really great adventures for you to hop on and uh, be part of the community as well rather than just consuming this content uh, uh, and you know, pre-recorded, all polished up, but not too polished because that's not reality. Uh, but the number one question that we get all the time is, is this really going to improve my brain? Is it really going to improve my brain? And it's interesting that they use that word brain because we're here to improve your memory. But yes, it will improve your memory and, and your brain at the same time because your brain is the physical entity in which your memory emerges. It is an emergent thing that comes from a physical entity. So the more that you can do to improve that physical entity through thought alone, then the better off it's going to be. But it's not just about thought. But the answer is yes. It's 100% yes. And so hit that thumbs up for the miraculous ability to just use thought to improve your brain physically. And so how that works basically is that you're probably sending more blood and oxygen into the brain, but you're also guiding yourself to make better decisions with your time and you're giving yourself more opportunities to win and you're probably giving yourself dopamine spikes as well. So this is very, very important. And by using the memory palace in order to engineer this game, you're actually increasing the opportunities for those rewards to happen. And so basically why that happens is because you're tapping into spatial memory and this is a free resource that you get all the time. Uh, just anytime you walk into a building, your brain through a process called spatial mapping starts to remember it for free without any effort. And if you just think about it, when you moved into your last house, like did you have to do any work to remember the layout, right? Probably not. And that's a very, very good thing to um, be able to just walk into a house and uh, remember it on autopilot or a building and so forth. And so then when you then learn how to use Memory Palace and you go through it, then you're going to just absolutely trigger off that free resource and you don't have to do any work for it. So you're reducing the labor by learning the Memory Palace technique. Now, is there labor involved in learning the Memory Palace technique? Well, of course, there's certainly effort, right? But kissing and eating chocolate also require all kinds of effort and nobody goes screaming about that. And uh, neither should you because those are wonderful things and so too is the Memory Palace. Now, the other thing that is absolutely incredible for improving your brain is how getting more involved in using spatial mapping and spatial memory unlocks your autobiographical memory in ways that give you tools of episodic memory memory and uh, better use of your uh, semantic memory and even things like figural memory and you know there's oodles of terminology you could use the memory tools to memorize them if you like but at the end of the day what we're doing is we're unlocking aspects of the chemical coding in the brain and we're really switching on the neural networks the book to read if you want a lot of information about this at a neurochemical level is called the case for mental imagery by Stephen Coslin I absolutely adore this book it's, uh, it's one of the great demonstrations of the evidence for how the brain is encoding information and, and it uh, gives you clues and understanding into the depth of how spatial memory is also involved in everything, in everything. So that's a great way of improving your brain is just having all of these different levels of memory constantly firing at a higher level with greater efficiency through the neural networks that everybody has but not everybody is using intentionally in ways that's actually sending more activity through them so that you're more switched on all the time. So how do you switch it on? You dive in, you learn the techniques and you apply them. And it's very, very clear. There's no real rocket science to that. And it's the same thing with push-ups. Let's just say that you're not even capable of doing a push-up from the floor. Where do you start? Against the wall, right? And then you get down and you do push-ups from your knees and then finally you build up to like planking for 10 minutes if that's what you want to do. Same thing with memory. You just start where you're at. 
you dive in, you persist, and you'll start unlocking all these levels of memory. So that's going to improve your brain simply because it's putting, oh, there's a spider there. <laughs> You're putting way more uh, electrical activity and neuronal activity to work for you, which must improve your brain. So the third reason is that you're also going to get to know yourself better and this massive index of material that's in your mind for use at any moment because you're using it. So I'm referring here a lot to what's called episodic memory and and figural memory in, in, in how they intertwine with each other. So figural memory in some sense is your ability to, to spot patterns in the world that are visual in nature. Like for example, if you saw someone and you said, hey, that looks like Homer Simpson. Well, you're drawing upon that at a certain level. And when you do this in such a way that you're like, hey, I need to remember some characters like in the hiragana in Japanese and they start with a particular sound and you're like, well, I could use Homer for that, right? Like it might be the M hiragana characters, but you choose Homer because it really just switches on something in your mind and you go through this process and now you're associating him there and you're using episodic memory because he's in your stories and you're using this figural memory because you have the visual idea of what Homer is like. You don't have to see Homer in your mind in your memory palaces, but you are certainly, tra you're, you're getting into that realm and this is already material that's in your mind. So Homer is already in your mind and the memory palace is already in your mind. The only thing that isn't in your mind are all these crazy hiragana characters, for example. So now you associate them together and away you go. And this is going to improve your brain just simply because you're using it and you're now you have hiragana to work with if you're learning Japanese or whatever the case may be and it's really really important to focus on these benefits for yourself and and, and understand that it is improving the actual physical part of your brain because you're putting it into use the other last point that I'll make is that you have the opportunity now because you are getting more out of your brain, you have the opportunity and you'll probably develop the desire to improve it even more because you've felt it switch on. You've felt that greater attention to the present moment. You've started to enjoy its benefits and then you're thinking, wow, I've optimized it this far. What happens if I take it just a little bit further? And some of the ways that you can do this is by memorizing with more advanced tools you can create the, uh, games for yourself where you increase the levels of challenge or you can start to focus on things like improving your sleep, improving your diet, improving your fitness regime, improving your meditation regime so that you're actually switching on more and more parts of your brain through physical improvements of it through other avenues. So memory techniques will get you pretty far, but those memory techniques, I was just talking with Nelson Dellis about this on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast and a little special bonus that we created for the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass students. If you switch on all these other aspects, you have no idea just how well the memory techniques can work because your brain is still slogging through brain fog from poor diet, from poor sleep, from lack of fitness of the whole body and lack of meditation for extending your attention span and really enabling you to do more, do it more quickly and do it through a physically optimized and primed up brain. So these are wonderful, wonderful reasons why that the memory palace technique will switch it on and in my own meditation. Why that this is so profound for me is because I actually visit memory palaces while meditating. I don't do this no mind nonsense, but rather what kind of mind do I want to have and what kind of content do I want to have? And so I'm memorizing Sanskrit, for example, and then using these techniques in meditation to direct and guide my meditation to particular outcomes that are themselves helping to reduce thought, right? and we're using thought of a particular kind. And it is known through uh, different brain scans and so forth, how meditation changes your brain by Andrew Newberg is a, a great book to read on this topic. And we can, you know, I haven't had my brain scanned yet, but maybe in the future we'll <laughs> get that done. But uh, you can see why that it works and how that it works. And so I actually focus on using a memory palace to help guide the actual 
changing of my physical brain. And the best part is, is you can too. So if you're new here, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button, join us on live streams for discussions like this as a group, as a community, and hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy this kind of content. Come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com and there'll be a link for the free course down below. It's at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. You'll learn how to create a memory palace. You'll learn how to really mix and mash all these wonderful levels of memory into one swift blow so that every time you're in a memory palace, you are triggering off autobiographical memory. You are triggering off semantic memory and, and uh, figural memory and episodic memory all at the same time and switching on the physical brain at the highest possible level and then attenuating yourself and really giving yourself the greatest amount of attention on, wow, I can optimize it this far, let's take it further. And that's our goal for you as a community and our goal for you as just people who as quickly as possible after they learn the memory techniques that I teach at Magnetic Memory Method also become the teacher of them through our community and their own efforts. It's grassroots from beginning to end and we just love how things are growing and growing and growing. So again, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed, come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com and understand always that yes, using a memory palace improves your physical brain physically because you're using the physical brain. Thanks again for watching and until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic.